Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Twitch streaming on the DevNet DevRel channel at Cisco here. So today we'll keep troubleshooting, we'll pick up from where we left off as usual. Um, and we're gonna go and see how the pipeline works. We had a bit of, uh, a bit of performance issues last time. The laptop was a bit maxed out, so let's see how it's gonna work this week. I rebooted in the meantime the, the CentOS 9 box, the one that's running my um, GitLab CE, the runner, and pretty much everything. So I rebooted it. Let's see how it's gonna work this week. So um, I'm connected here remotely. I have my VM started, it's running here. I'm connected with Visual Studio Code as usual remotely to it. And then let's check um, my Docker, GitLab, and GitLab Runner. See if they're running. Okay, they're both running. GitLab C is healthy. Let's see if I can log in. And there we go. If I go here, the pipeline last time failed. Let's see what happened. Corrected indentation. So we had some issues with the indentation in the YAML file, the PyTS YAML file. Um, so kind of fixed that. Uh, let me connect also to my DMZ. so that we have access to my CML instance where we are running our lab, right? Our, our virtual infrastructure. And that was 10, 10, 10, 33. Log in. Make sure we have our four devices running. Okay. Uh, this is on, devices are running. Uh, so it looks good. Uh, now if I go to my pipelines, we'll just rerun the last run. See here we have uh, well, like six failed runs, but we made progress in each one of them. So we're getting closer. Um, so, let me just re-trigger this. Rerun that pipeline. And it's running. And let's see the first stage. What's going on? So it's running on runner, getting source from Git repository. It's gonna do a Git pull then it's gonna run the commands from that gitlab-ci.yaml file, right? Those these stages uh, using the same image from Docker Hub. We already uh, copied it locally. So we have the latest version. So while it's doing that, let's see. Okay, so exit code one, it failed, but why did it fail? Let's see. <clears throat> so we know we connected the device pre snapshot. Okay, so executing actions in parallel failed still. Executed action parse. This one passed. Executed action parse on switch two failed. Okay, so let's scroll up and see what happened. So we see here actually ran some commands. Uh, it was able to connect to the devices. Run commands. Uh, 
where's the top all right here we go so this is the command that is running the stage one right change the directory then pyts run job <clears throat> the test bed uh starting subsection connect so it's connected to devices uh connection to 176 and 175 on telnet that's fine connection to distribute uh, the distribution router two and one it's connected to both devices um user verification that's fine terminal width zero uh, and then terminal session timeout zero okay management interface identifying management zero it's connected devices <clears throat> past connection all right so executing actions in parallel uh to pre snapshot starting section verify ospf neighborships so we're checking the neighborships okay so we see verify that contains value is included in the output Verify that contains value neighbor one seventy two sixteen two fifty two two twenty five. Failed reason is not included in the output. Okay, so the neighbor is not there. Let's see why is that the case. The result of step one. And the output has failed. So let's see why has it failed. Clear. So I'm just going to SSH Cisco at where was it? Or we can check here show IS for SPF neighbors. 25 and 33 so that's fine what about on switch 2 oh why so there's no uh, show IP route or SPF there's nothing okay so there's something wrong on this ship on uh, switch 2 there's no SPF neighbors so the pipeline failed let me make sure that it failed on the right switch verify the neighbor is not there and this is on switch 2 right so the pipeline failed correctly because the neighbors are not there. So let's troubleshoot a bit and see what's going on. How come OSPF is not working on here? Uh, interfaces are up. VLAN 106 is down. Lubeck is up. Uh, so why is the neighborship not being established here? Let's see. There's no neighbors interface.
feeling is that blind protocol is down. Blind protocol is down. Blind protocol is down on all these VLANs. VLAN is down, line protocol is down. Uh, okay, so all VLANs, basically all our interfaces, it, uh, line protocol is down. Uh, also on this. Hmm, okay, so it looks like show VLAN brief. The villains are active, but protocol link down, protocol down, link down. Uh, okay, so that's a problem, protocol down, link down. Um, let's see the interface, show run. Um, ETA one, three. One four. So line protocol is down, right? Let's try to bounce these interfaces. One three, shut down. To show IP interface brief. Admin down, okay, so then if I do a no shut, do show IP interface brief. Okay, so that brought it up. Let's do the same with ETH14. Bounce it. Okay, so it's down, admin down. If I do a no shutdown here, let's see if that's gonna refresh and bring it back online. And it did. Okay, so it says link up, protocol up. Uh, do show happy USPF neighbors. Okay, so now neighborships have come up. OSPF. Do show IP route or SPF. Okay, so now we're getting them all. Do show VLAN brief. Do show IP or SPF interface. Just to check, VLANs are still down though. VLAN 105, VLAN 103, 101. Let's try to do the same thing. Do show IP interface brief. VLAN 101. Bounce them. Do a shot, no shot. See if that helps. And it didn't. Okay, so. Uh, Let's see VLAN 101, show VLAN brief. So VLAN 101 is working on ETH 11 and 12. So ETH 11 and 12, you might have to bounce those interfaces, right? Uh, do show run ETH 11 and 12. Shut down, no shut. Shut down. Uh, no shut. All right, so they're all uh, protocol up, link up. Uh, except VLAN 106 and VLAN 106. 
let's see where is it running VLAN 106. Okay, it should be same interfaces. Oh, it's admin down. That's the problem. Uh, VLAN 106, no shutdown. So it's admin up, protocol down, link down. Anyway, we have all the other interfaces uh, up and running. So it must have been just a problem when bringing up the uh, Nexus switch here in CML. Just needed to bounce the interfaces, basically do a shot, no shot. Show IP or SPF neighbors. All right, that's much better. There we go. Um, all right, so uh, this looks much better. Let's go back to our pipeline and trigger it again. So right, this is how you would troubleshoot your pipelines, right? Go through, you see the, the output is pretty verbose. Uh, so you would just go and see at what stage it failed. For us, it didn't find the neighbors that uh, that 25 on switch two. We checked on the CLI. We saw that indeed there were issues with OSPF. There were issues with all the interfaces on that device. So we brought it back. We fixed that problem. And now we're just rerunning the pipeline um, and see where we go, how far uh, it's going to go this time. So the neighborship should be fine now. The um, OSPF routes should be fine. So let's see. So we did have to troubleshoot. If you remember last time, last week, when I had, uh, I was troubleshooting this also, I was mentioning that we might have to troubleshoot the SPF neighborship. So we ended up having to do that. Uh, but that's fine. That's how we learn. Okay, so it looks like it's running all the commands here. And job finished. Oh, it failed. Failed job. Let's see why it failed this time. Pre snapshot failed. Come on, clean up past. So we have snapshot. Uh, it executed in parallel. It got the OSPF neighborships. It uh, verified the advertised OSPF routes. And then it failed on pre snapshot OSPF executing action in parallel, it passed. So this executed learn, action learn, and then executing action API failed on both switch one and switch two. Okay, so all the other ones have passed. Okay, perfect. So let's see why this failed the no such follow directory pre snapshots pre OSPF this switch JSON failed reason calling API save take the JSON file. All right, so let's see. Are there any other errors up here? No. Connect to the devices, run the commands, uh, retrieve quite a bit of information about OSPF routes and everything. All right, so it seems that that's the only error. 
uh, we have left and it's calling APIs. Okay, so let's see. If I go Python, yes. Pre trigger data file. And we have this section. Uh, well, both of these that it fails on. All right, so we have pre snapshots. Save dig to JSON file, pre snapshots, pre OSPF bars device JSON. So let's initialize a couple of files in here with those names. Uh, pre OSPF this. Pre snapshots. Uh, and we'll have it here. And we'll have a new file. And a new file switch to. So just initializing two empty JSON files. Um, And now we'll have to see git status. Uh, see the source CICD. And we need to create those also. PyTS pre snapshots new file. And new file switch to. We'll just initialize, see if that helps. It should help. Maybe it wasn't able to create the files, rights permissions. Let's see. So if I do a git status in here now, pre snapshots. All right. So git add everything. Git commit with the message that added pre snapshot JSON files. And then I get push with developer All right, so that should have triggered the pipeline automatically. So if we go under pipelines now, we see indeed we have that added pre snapshot JSON files. So if you go in here, let's see. And you're running on the pipeline and we should have those two JSON files in that pre snapshot folder, right? That's what we did. And let's see now what happens while running this stage. Okay, job succeeded. Wow, finally, so stage one successfully completed. We see here artifacts, files and directories dropped in there, created, created token. So if I go back to pipelines, it's gonna go and move to stage two. Oh, stage two is also completed also successfully. Deploying OSPF. Right, let's see what happened here. No hosts matched. Okay, so that's a problem actually. Um, Ansible is being run in a world writable directory. Two, two, two. We're found in group name, but now replaced to see details. Could not match supply pattern, ignoring an XOS playbook to configure interface and remove. No hosts matched. Um, so that's a problem for us. <laughs> we'll have a look at why is that the case. And what happened? The third stage also failed. Let's let's have a look at the PyTS. Why did it fail first? And PyTS. 
pyts job.py maybe you meant job uploading artifacts so it actually was not able to run the command at all pyts run job.py Uh, let's see what we've done. Pre-trigger actually should be here. PyTS run job. We're missing that. So that's a problem. And then test environment, test bed file. Trigger data file, post snapshots. Uh, so let's see. And then post trigger data file. We have that post OSPF. Pre snapshots. Oh, this should be post snapshot, right? post OSPF, another mistake here, but then we should be able to create those two new files, post OSPF, test switch 01.json, and post OSPF test switch 02.json. Okay, so we have these empty files. Uh, post snapshot, post snapshot, let's make sure we save this. All right, we saved our pipeline here. And let's go and see the Ansible also confirm Big. So we have our host uh, 10, 10, 10, 177 and 178. This should actually be one, give me one second, 175 and 176. Right? Those are the actual hosts that we're targeting. And uh, uh, let me see. We have 177, 178. That is wrong. And let's see, where's our playbook configure? Okay, so host is actually an XOS. So hosts here should be an XOS and then 175 and 176. Um, group bars, host bars, 77 and 178. That can be right. Let's go and check. Show IP interface. It's actually management show IP VRF brief. Show VRF brief. Show VRF management. Show IP interface brief VRF management. 
Oh, it is 177. I apologize. And 178. Um, so it is 177, 178. Let's go back to hosts. 177 and 178. And then let's make sure we also have the test environment here. 177 and 178. Yes. All right. Okay. So let's see now. Git status. Git at all. Git commit dash m. Modify GitLab dash CI dot YAML to fix post PyTS job modified uh, Ansible hosts. and post trigger data file and added post snapshot JSON files. Git push developer all right so that been pushed let's see our new pipeline how is it going to run trigger automatically bunch of changes we've done here so now stage one pre snapshots right it's going to go connect to the devices run those OSPF commands. Okay, so job succeeded. Duration 30 seconds, then it's gonna move on to stage two, which was deploying OSPF. Let's see what happens now. If it's gonna run, we fix the hosts that NX dash OS, we should have an NX OS. Uh, first time chat, I was lurking around, I came across your stream, maybe I can help you with Twitch custom graphics. Evac Jim, thanks for reaching out. Um, whoa, the stream. Oh, so you see here. Okay, so that's good. Ansible is actually running now. The playbook. Perfect. So job succeeded also for Ansible. Let's see, can you folks send to us OBS? And let's see the third stage. Of the pipeline, it's running right now. And it failed. Stage three failed. Let's see what happened. No files to upload, uploading artifacts. Uh, what happened? Post trigger data file.yaml failed. Post snapshot OSPF. 
Okay, so there was an error, VARS device. All right, let's see. Here, VARS device one, line 54, VARS device one. Uh, all right, so let's see what happened here. Post trigger data file. Uh, free trigger data file. Virus device one, device two. They're the same. And then line 54. It says. Expected string instance integer found. Uh, key error. Test section cut error processing markups post snapshot. Failed to load the data file post trigger data file.yaml. Okay, let's see. Uh, where do we have it? Post trigger data file.yaml. Post trigger data file.yaml. That's the right name. That's the post snapshot, test trigger data file, post trigger data file. So that's correct. And then here, parse device one, parse device two. Let's see, where's the error? Parse device two. Parse device two. So it should be fine, device. Vars device one, Vars device two. Variables. Let's see why variable name oh there's also an error here post to SPF variables but besides that let's see what's going on how come it failed failed to load the data file post trigger data file.yaml the above exception was there because of the following exception genie load to couldn't load uh, cut error while processing markup, post snapshot, test sections, two post snapshot SPF, loop, parallels, API arguments. Um, okay, let's check. Let's do a quick YAML lint. Make sure the YAML is correct first. And then go and see a bit closer what's going on. Okay, so the YAML is valid. It's not a problem with the YAML file with tabs or spaces or any of that. But we are having issues 
expect the string instance integer found. Another exception occurred. Okay, caught error during tax execution, test script. Uh, error vars device one. Key error vars device one was the records of the following exception. Chain get vars device one. During handling, another exception occurred. So it's a vars device one problem. Uh, in Genie. IDS uh, recourse uh, code error processing markups. Okay, variables. Oh, here it is. Markup variables post OSPF vars device one. All right, so this, there's a problem with it. Copy. Variables. And then file name. device one and then device two. Okay, so there is a problem right here. Uh, let me go and check. Um, CD. And this was uh, for post snapshot OSPF. Save dig the JSON file. So the data is variables post OSPF. Uh, let's call vars dot device one and dot device two. Let's see, we have it somewhere else. Device, device, vars device one, vars device two. Vars uh, device one. Post snapshots. All right. Let's see now. <laughs> git and everything. Git commit uh, corrected vars underscore device to vars dot device. Git push developer. And let's see now the pipeline again. Automatically triggered. Uh, stage one running now. Uh, so this one should run fine. Now we kind of corrected, figured out all the issues. And then ansible and then the third the post snapshot let's see if it's gonna okay so job succeeded on the stage one stage two running now deploying our spf and
that's gonna run the Ansible playbook. Run that configured. Now the whole start defined correctly. The NXOS grouping. So that's been fixed. And once this is complete, then it's gonna go to stage three, which is the post snapshot, which we had the problem with those vars underscore instead of vars dot device. So a bit of you know issues of typos here and there. Um, but I mean, that's how you catch them. All right, so there we go. Uh, got the devices, the 177, 178. Configuring OSPF on the interfaces. And that should be successful, and it is. And now stage three, the final stage. Let's see if it's gonna run and work. We'll go click on it. And then same thing, you see the verbose output, right? Using the same Docker executor, the same image. It's gonna go ahead and do the post trigger data file, uh, same test environment and check that everything works well. Come on pipeline. So we're getting close, right? We have stage one. Uh, successfully completed stage two we fixed it successfully completed now we're at stage three and once we figure all the small bugs and if there's any other issues in this stage then we have the whole pipeline basically running right so let's see all right so we know it's connected to the devices it's running the commands very verbose and past everything all the test results are passed and job succeeded there we go there we go pipeline successfully ran uh give me one second so pipeline successfully ran finally Right, you see here all the history of how we got here, <laughs> starting with a failed pipeline, failed, failed, then we started correcting them, then we got to the first two stages, correct, then third failed, and now finally we got our full pipeline complete and ran successfully. So Right, what happened? If we go and investigate pipeline past uh, the three stages, the pre snapshot, right? We see here uh, basically it ran all the commands that we've told it in the pre trigger that I file here. So it connected these two devices. Right, it verified the OSPF neighbor detail, it verified that 25 and 33, both of these neighbors are on both of the devices, on both switch one, distribution switch one and distribution switch two. It verified the OSPF routes, made sure that the loopback interfaces are there. The loopback from the second switch is on the first, Right, and the loopback from the first switch is on the second, so it's in its routing table. Um, then it went and uh, ran parallel pre snapshots. It should have saved the files here in the pre snapshots, the output, it didn't. So let's see why that's that didn't happen. Uh, executed actions, executed action learn, executed API, past past, uh, creating archive file, generating HTML report file. So I can actually see the job artifacts if I browse. 
Uh, let's see what happened here. Pre snapshots. Pre OSPF dist storing the job artifact. You can download it instead. Okay, so download it. Open file. And And here we go. That's the pre OSPF this switch zero one. So we know it created the artifact. Uh, but it didn't save it pre OSPF this. We have pre OSPF this switch one dot JSON. So why didn't it save it? Uh, jobs. So it's created, it's just it's not saved. Uh, in the right location, let's see. Pre snapshots. It's an empty file, the one we just created. And so here, when we're actually saving it in our free trigger data file, save dict JSON file in the pre snapshots, pre OSPF, parse device one and device two. So we're saving the variable name pre OSPF. And then we're saving that output in that file name. Uh, contains. Variables pre OSPF. So we'll have to see why this is not getting saved and same with the post trigger data file, because you can see it's there. It's being created as an artifact. It just is not saved locally. Um, but so yeah, the pipeline finally successfully ran, right? Um, and now let's do uh, let's do a quick test, right? Let's create a new interface. So if I go and I want to create a new interface, where is my host bars? 177. Right, I want to loop back 101. or 100, 100, 101, right? Uh, and same thing I want on my second switch. Low back 100, 102. Okay, and then my post trigger data file also need to change this. I want to check for 100, right? That new loopback and 101, right? So I have a new loopback 100. Uh, let's check that they're not there. There's no loopback 100. Show IP interface brief. There's no loop. Oh, there is a loopback 100. Um, loop 100. Okay, let me remove that. No interface loop 100. Okay, so that's gone. And then 
also on my second switch. No loopback 100, no interface loopback 100. And it's gone. Okay, so let's configure that using our pipeline. So that new interface, right? I have it saved. So if I do now a git status, and I modified it in the wrong part, I have to modify it here. Yes, not there. But here. Loop back 100. 101. Save. Same thing here. Loop back 100. 100 and two here. Save. And same thing on our post trigger data file. I want to check for 100.2 and 100.1. So if I do a git status now, git add everything, git commit dash m, add a loop back 100, git push developer all right so now this triggered the pipeline as usual and it's going to configure that loopback 100 on both switches right so if i go back to my pipeline pipelines we should see it here being triggered at the loopback 100 so this is the comment right and We'll do the pre snapshot as usual, take a snapshot, but we're interested in the post snapshot because that's where we're going to verify that the new interface has actually been configured and advertised between the two devices and learned um, in each of their routing tables. So let's see, and then we'll check also the CLI and then we'll wrap up for this week, next week, um, we might have just a walkthrough of everything, right? Of to show you. So it's passed. Um, one more time, run over everything um, in the chat. If you have any messages or any questions, bring them on next time. Um, if you follow this, you watch the video, you watched all of them. If you have any questions, I'll be following the chat specifically next week. Um, and uh, we'll wrap up. So that will be it. We have the pipeline running. We have all the components running. We see here now stage two is running our pipeline, which is the, OISP, uh, the, the Ansible playbook. And this is going to go and configure that Loop back 101, loop back 100, sorry. And actually, we should probably, as it kicks the stage here, okay, connect to the devices. Loop back 100, right here. So it's changed, right? We see that it's changed. We have a new loop back. Loop back 100 changed. See the status, it's been created. OSPF routes change loop back 100. So it's actually job succeeded. It's been added. So now if I quickly go back here and I do a show IP interface brief, there you go. We see that loop back 100 configured on our switch two. Same thing on switch one. And then the pipeline would go stage three and verify that the route has been propagated successfully. So if I do a show IP route or SPF, 
I see that this 101 from switch one is indeed learned on switch two. So that's gonna check with that post trigger data file, right? PyTS is gonna check that indeed uh, that change has successfully been not only completed, but also there are propagated and learned. Right, so this is pretty much your pipeline. Um, pretty cool, right? Now, whenever you wanna change uh, OSPF configuration on your network, small network in this case, but it could be as large as you have your own environment. Job succeeded, pipeline succeeded. We know interface has been configured, uh, rods propagated, and next would be pushing into production, right? So we'll also have a look next time on how you could have this as a separate branch, like a test branch. Uh, you can download the pre-snapshot, the post-snapshot here. Um, and also have a look at why it hasn't been saved in the right location, the artifact, right? Um, we'll have a look at that and wrap up. So two successful runs of our pipeline. Finally, we got it. All three stages working, pipelines working. Um, and we'll have a look next week. We'll wrap up everything. Um, configure a couple more interfaces, make sure that it works. Uh, verify that uh, the artifacts were not saved in the right location. And um, that would be pretty much it. Bring your questions if there's any of them. Um, and then we will finish up the CICD project. Finally, all components, pipelines working. Uh, and you can take this, modify it as you see fit for your own environment. So thank you all for joining this week. Uh, we made some great progress, right? The pipeline is running. Finally, we have all the stages completed. Uh, no more typos. It's just the only pending thing is the artifacts. Make sure that they get saved in the right location. So I'll check that uh, before next week and let you know what the problem was. Um, all right. So thanks to everyone. Thank you all for hanging around, being here, following um, our journey to creating CSD pipelines for infrastructure automation. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.